So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Atish and welcome to this uh, class today on introduction to analytics and careers in analytics. Uh, it's great to have you all here today and over the next uh, one to one and a half hours I'll be taking you through a really great introduction on analytics. Okay, so Let's just uh, move on to the agenda for the day today Right, so the agenda is initially we'll give you a brief introduction of Advancer and then we'll start on with the core of the class which is the introduction to analytics We'll speak about various uses of analytics analytics case studies as to how uh, Basically as to how companies are using analytics to benefit and prosper We'll then speak about uh, how the various career options in analytics will pan out and then we'll take you through how advancer can help you in creating your analytics career what is the certified business analytics professional course about for which we are holding this first class today and at the end of uh, our presentation i'll open the floor for questions so any questions that you have please feel free to ask me at the end of the class till then i would request your patience and uh, i'm sure a lot of your questions which you may have will get answered during the course of this presentation itself. Okay, so let's move on and uh, I'll just introduce Advancer to you. So Advancer is an IMIT alumni venture and what we are doing is we are creating an analytics knowledge hub where we want to meet the learning needs of all kinds of professionals, be it people already working in analytics and who want to upskill themselves or made be people like you who are new to analytics and want to get into this kind of field okay uh, so just one or two people are facing some audio issues so let me help out just give me one second please guys thanks for your patience Okay, so what we are is we are one of India's top analytics training institutes and we have been rated as such by Analytics India magazine and Analytics Vidya which are both, both very popular blogs as far as analytics is concerned and highly recommended. Uh, CIO Review magazine has rated us as one of India's 50 most promising big data companies. And what we do is we provide online training in analytics and big data so that you can learn anytime and from anywhere and how we are going to do this. I'll take you through those course details at the end of our presentation. Uh, we have trained over 1400 people globally in this uh, field of analytics and big data and all of them today stand testament to our capabilities in training in this field. So my name is Atish Shah. I am the founder and CEO at Advancer and I have over six years of experience in the investment banking industry before I started Advancer and I worked with global investment banks like Lehman and Nomura and uh, in terms of my educational background I am a postgrad in management from IIM Lucknow and also a bachelor's in engineering from Mumbai University. My co-founder on the analytics and big data vertical is Mr. Lalit Sachan. He has over four years of experience in this field now. He's extremely passionate about decision making through data and he has worked on end-to-end -end analytics projects. Uh, his educational background is that he has completed his post-graduation in operations research from Indian Statistical Institute, Calcutta, and he's a B.Tech from IIT Kanpur. So let's get into the core of uh, our class today, which is the introduction to analytics. Now, analytics and big data has been creating a buzz around the world, right? It's on the front pages of magazines. It's on uh, newspapers are well talking quite a lot about analytics. So you have the economists talk about a data deluge. Uh, the Harvard Business Review talking about big data newspapers saying the next big job boom is in analytics There's an analytics wave analyst jobs are in demand 
so there's been a huge buzz around this field a lot of hype around this field over the last couple of years let's say but uh, what exactly is analytics does anyone have any thoughts regarding what exactly is analytics what i'd like to do is just make this class a bit interactive and see what exactly are your views in terms of what do you think is analytics okay so just put in your views into the uh, questions window so pradeep says uh, getting the job done with the data we have is analytics kaiser says review the data and take decision okay sairam analyzing data sure sairam but anything more than that madhav analyzing data to reach to conclusion and strategy is what you are saying karthik according to you looking at customer data or corporate data and see what models can be used to understand trends risk opportunity okay karthik that's a fantastic definition and uh, i think you are using some technologic i mean some terminology like models etc but for those who don't understand that i'll be explaining that shortly anand says give gut feeling a back seat yes of course vishal bringing in sites from raw data great vishal okay maruti says analyze data to draw business decisions and sairam adds to his answer by saying to get better results to improve sales profits okay okay so i'm i'm not really going to expand or rather read out what everyone is saying at this moment but uh, let me just say that a lot of you have got a brief idea about what exactly is analytics a kind of uh, partial answer to what exactly is analytics but has anyone seen analytics actually working in real life have you come across analytics being implemented actually on you any examples maruti what about flipkart ranveer says analyze data quarter to quarter to get more profit but what exactly are you doing vishal says yes amazon website anand hiring of freshers kaiser says using scoring okay kaiser what about uh, how are you using scoring what exactly is scoring pradeep customer neuro behavioral assessment all right maruti says google targeted ads yes yes okay on e-commerce websites colleges okay 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 so, so some of you have some brief idea about how analytics has been used and how you yourself have come across analytics spending behavior etc okay fantastic so but there's a very simple example of or rather an example of analytics which we all have seen almost on a daily basis especially all of those who use social networks okay so do you recognize these pictures on your screen the picture on the top left is from facebook which is people you may know the picture on the top right is people you may know from linkedin and at the bottom is twitter users you may be interested in so what exactly is are these pictures telling you so what they are saying is that these are these few names or few people whom you may be interested in adding as a friend on facebook connecting with on linkedin or following on twitter so imagine the fact that these social networks have hundreds of millions of users and from those hundreds of millions of users they have picked out few chosen names maybe 5 to 10 names whom they think you are highly likely to connect with they have to make a appropriate recommendation appropriate recommendation to you to ensure that the success of their social network continues in terms of connecting more and more people and hence their recommendations need to be accurate so how do they actually figure out that from these hundreds of millions of potential connections that you may have these are the few people you are likely to connect with 
Okay, some of you bright ones have already come up with an answer. Uh, Madhav says using network analysis, these are suggested. Okay. Anand says similar profiles or interests. Karthik, you are talking about them using some kind of algorithm to see the similarity and make suggestions. And Palak, you are talking about that they have deduced these names from our own activity logs or similar backgrounds. Okay, interesting. Kaiser says using my data behavioral and process in model to predict. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So again, some of you have got a reasonable idea of how these guys actually go about doing this. So this is an example of something called as a recommendation engine. A recommendation engine is nothing but a model which takes in humongous amount of data data about your interactions on these social networks whom are you connected with what exactly are you doing on the network uh, whom are you are uh, on whose comments and status updates do you frequently comment or like uh, which groups are you a part of uh, various other uh, things that you may be doing on these social networks what common interests you have so based on this analysis of data they try to figure out which are your most strongest potential connections okay so they undertake something called as a network analysis also to understand where the strongest potential connections lie after analyzing all this humongous amount of data now Think about it that hundreds of millions of users will have hundreds of interaction points across these networks almost on a daily basis. The amount of data that they have to analyze in real time is humongous. And they have to analyze, I mean, they analyze this data and come up with these highly accurate recommendations. This is nothing but an analytics model at work, something that you see on a daily basis. right so let's move on into the more theoretical definition of what exactly is analytics so analytics if one goes by the theoretical definition is the application of te computer technology statistics and domain knowledge to solve problems in business and industry to aid efficient and effective decision making what does this mean so let's break it down here. Analytics is what? It is the application of computer technology, statistics, and domain knowledge. So these are three things which are extremely important as far as the usage of analytics is concerned. You need, given the huge amount of data, given that a lot of the data is being generated digitally, you need computer technology to capture that data. You need that technology to store that data, to process the data, and eventually help you in analyzing that humongous amount of data. The techniques that you use to actually analyze this data and make predictions for the future or make recommendations is are nothing but statistical techniques. And eventually, how to use this technology and how to use these statistical techniques sometimes is also domain dependent or industry dependent. And that is where domain knowledge comes into play. So how to analyze data maybe for marketing activities or how to analyze data on the financial side or how to analyze data for your supply chain. And all of that, the knowledge of the domain or the industry matters quite significantly. Now, once you have these three applications, or rather these, the usage of these three, what are you going to do with it? You are actually going to solve problems for business and industry, right? Business and industry face significant problems across their various operational areas, be it marketing, be it the financial side, be it supply chain, be it sales, or even in various non-business related areas like NGOs, like government, on your own personal side also. So you are solving problems using data to do what? To aid efficient and effective decision making, okay? So eventually the goal of analytics is to help in decision making. 
uh, some of you are asking a few questions at the moment i would request you to just hold on to your questions till we end this uh, presentation today a lot of your questions will get answered during the course itself okay during the course of this presentation itself so just hold on to that so what exactly is analytics analytics is simply the scientific process where you convert raw data into knowledge to do what to support making decisions analytics also involves finding patterns in data sometimes you may not really have problems to solve sometimes you may not really have questions to answer but you just want to find out what are the various interesting patterns in that data which may lead you to something beneficial so that is known as something more as data mining so analytics involves also data mining or finding patterns in data the goal of analytics as i said is to improve business society or personal performance by gaining knowledge from data so you are collecting raw data you want to create knowledge out of that raw data and analytics is as someone said earlier moving decision making from gut feel and guess estimates to better more informed ones driven by data right so decision making is no longer uh, led by okay your gut feel your intuition making some estimates or the experience of the manager it is now driven by data what does data tell me that is what analytics is all about so why has analytics become so important all of a sudden i mean all these uh, things should always have been around right all these issues all these reasons for using analytics they have always been around so what has happened that analytics has created such a hype over the last 4 to 5 years and the answer is there has been a huge explosion in data if you look at a study by ibm what they are saying is that 2 and a half quintillion bytes of data has is being created each year if you look at the entire data available across human history according to ibm 90% of that data was created only in the last 2 years so across human history whatever data we have 10% of it was created before the last 2 years and 90% of it has now been created in the last 2 years a study by oracle talks about the amount of overall data available in the world and they say that at least in 2012 the total amount of data in the world was about 3 and a half zettabytes an unimaginably huge number and every year they are expecting this to grow at a 40% annual rate reaching 45 zettabytes by 2020 this is a huge huge growth in the amount of data and this data is very very valuable because it hides a lot of insights it hides a lot of knowledge and to actually extract that knowledge is something which will benefit a lot of companies industry governments etc and hence with this explosion in data there is an explosion happening in the number of people required to analyze data and that is where you guys actually are standing today at the cusp of a boom which is happening in not only data but also in the need to analyze data and bring out the knowledge from it so a huge boom is getting created in the number of analytics jobs across the world and i'll shortly give you some stats on that also so what are the different types of analytics okay analytics is not just one single thing there are various kinds of analytics the most i would say basic level of analytics and many of you may actually be familiar with that is something called as descriptive analytics descriptive analytics and helps you answer the question what happened or is happening in the business currently right it looks at the data and says what happened in the past or what is happening at the moment descriptive analytics also can be known as um business intelligence creating reports creating dashboards mis right some of these terms will be familiar to you guys some of you may even be working in them so 
let's take for a simple example understanding what is happening with sales how did our sales grow in the last three months did they grow did they not grow did they fall which salesperson performed better which locations did well as far as our products are concerned what is happening at the moment so all these questions are where you actually create reports and hand them over to management and say look this is what happened right so that is known as descriptive analytics you have extracted some knowledge from that data from the historical data that you have and said this is what is happening but then you want more knowledge you want to understand why did it happen why did our sales not grow over the last three months why did xyz sales perform space salesperson perform better and abc did not why did mumbai and chennai do well but delhi and bangalore did not do well right so that is the next stage of analytics and that is called as inquisitive analytics where you ask some questions of your data as to why did something like that happen and to do that requires some kind of basic statistical analysis of data then you move on to the next stage where fine you understood what happened in the past you understand what is going to happen in the future i mean what is why did it happen now you want to understand what is going to happen in the future you want to make predictions so for instance let's say you want to forecast your sales over the next three to six months you want to figure out which sales person to uh, incentivize because you understand that he is likely to perform better you want to understand where exactly uh, you should in which locations you should increase your advertising in because you believe those locations are likely to perform better so that is where the next stage comes in which is called as predictive analytics what is likely to happen you will want to understand that based on the historical data you have so not only have you extracted the knowledge about the past now you are creating knowledge about the future from the historical data and that is where advanced statistical techniques are utilized and finally what action should be taken right how to optimize our sales how to optimize our let's say advertising budget to ensure most amount of sales that is where the next stage comes in which is prescriptive analytics so these are the four different types of analytics which is dipp descriptive inquisitive predictive and prescriptive now descriptive analytics and to an extent inquisitive analytics most companies have kind of uh, done a lot of work on that many companies have had uh, business intelligence guys mis people working with them to do that but predictive analytics is where a lot of companies are getting interested now where a lot of the industry is moving towards because understanding what happened in the past is fine but what adds most value to them is understanding what is going to happen in the future right every one of us likes to know what is going to happen in the future and so is it with business so predictive analytics is the and to an extent prescriptive analytics is an area which is getting a lot of attention and that is where a lot of jobs are being created so moving on a lot of people ask us the question is business analytics the same as business analysis and the answer to that is no these two are very different things business analysis or business analysts what do they do some of you may be business analysts at the moment what you guys are doing is you are creating business architectures you are eliciting requirements from let's say your clients you are documenting those requirements you are communicating those requirements to your technical teams you are working as a person between the technical guys and the clients or the business guys to translate the requirements the languages etc you do business process analysis you do change management so this is what business analysis is about but business analytics is very different that is about working with data it is about using data to bring out the knowledge it is about mining mining a data warehouse to report the past performance 
it is analyzing why something happened it is creating predictive models it is prescribing strategies based on statistical analysis of data so that is what business analytics is about these two are extremely different from each other this was just for your knowledge because a lot of people still have this confusion so what is the business analytics process about how does an actual analytics project actually work what do you really do over there so imagine yourself to be a consultant working for an analytics firm okay imagine yourself to be a consultant and you are working for a client the client comes to you and says uh, and gives you a one line business problem right uh, that one line business problem could be a lot of our customers have left our service in the last 3 months we want to know why or we or it could be as simple as our sales have fallen in the last 6 months can you help us out that is a one line problem a client may share with you and you have to take it from there to the absolute end conclusion which is helping the client create a strategy or take a decision on how to reverse those or how to address those problems so the first and foremost thing that you need to do is understand the business of the client right you need to understand his domain you need to understand his industry you need to understand how he works what the competition is you need to act as a complete business consultant have to understand i mean, have to have that domain understanding once why do you need to i mean basically have that domain understanding is because the client may have given you a problem but that may not be the actual problem that needs to be solved the actual problem may be something else or you may need to derive what exactly is the analytics problem that is there within this business problem so once you understand all of these things you come up with various analytics problems or analytics or questions that can be answered using data right then you have to figure out what kind of data you need to answer those questions so you need to have or once once you have that kind of data understanding you need to collect that data or you need to extract that data from wherever whatever it system it is being stored in then you need to go through that data to figure out how good it is right whether it meets your requirement or not quite frequently in real life you will find that data is never accurate especially when you are dealing with millions of data points you will find that quite often date some some points are missing some point data points are incorrect some some kind of data is where you cannot really use it as it is but you need to transform it into something else altogether so that data understanding stage takes place once you achieve that stage then you understand how to clean or prepare your data so data as i said in real life will be frequently dirty now you need to clean that data so how do you clean that data you do that using various techniques once you are satisfied once you have satisfactorily cleaned that data prepared it then you can create something called as a statistical model on it a statistical model is nothing but the advanced statistical analysis of that data which gives you a mathematical equation that equation tells you that if you plug in various data points as input into one side of the equation it will give you the output right so you create that model and you understand how well that model actually works is that model actually going to help you answer or solve your problem if not then you maybe need to use some other technique to create another kind of model eventually once you are satisfied that the models that you have created are going to be highly accurate and highly useful in solving your problem you have reached that stage of model evaluation right you figure out how well that model is working once you choose a model which works the best then you go ahead and deploy it in business you basically help business create a strategy so that they can uh, i mean based on that model the business benefits 
and then you have to eventually keep monitoring how well your models are working and keep improving on them and hence this entire cycle then repeats so this is at a very basic level the entire business analytics process of a let's say an analytics project so let's talk about various uses of analytics we'll, we what i have done here is we have divided the various uses of analytics let's say as per domain areas so for instance let's talk about marketing within marketing you can use analytics to segment your customers into various groups why would you want to segment customers you want to segment customers into various groups to understand much more about them right to help you understand how best to target them so let's say you may segment your customers using their demographics you segment them as per age you segment them as per their gender you segment them as per their locations uh, you segment them as per their incomes etc uh, etc et or you can do more of psychographic profiling of your customers and segment them according to those variables so so seg customer segmentation actually helps you understand the kind of groups of customers which are similar to each other and which can be targeted using more personalized methods right so customer segmentation helps you understand your customers in a much better manner then you have things like upselling and cross selling what is upselling upselling is selling a higher value product to someone who has already purchased a lower value product from you or to someone who has purchased a free trial from you how to get him to start paying for your for your service so if you if you start targeting everyone who has purchased a lower value product from you or if someone all, all of those people who have taken free trials from you you may eventually exhaust your budget but let's say you want to ensure that your marketing budget your promotional budget to actually convince people to purchase higher value products from you is limited and you want to use it to the best of your ability to ensure that most number of people convert how are you going to do that you are going to do that by figuring out which of your customers are most likely to convert you are going to predict which ones are most likely to convert who has the highest probability of converting and you are going to concentrate your budget only on those guys then there is cross selling similarly cross selling is about selling other products to people who have already purchased one product or service from you right again you want to concentrate only on those people who are who have got a as they say in terminology a high propensity to convert right a high probability to convert so that is where you create statistical models you create analytical models to figure out who these people are then there is something called as market basket analysis what is market basket analysis market basket analysis is used largely in the retail industry or in the e-commerce industry where and we'll have a case study on that shortly so i won't explain this in detail to you right now but it is about understanding what kind of products people actually purchase together at the same time and try to figure out how best to actually package those products to create higher value for the company then there is marketing media mix analysis what is marketing media mix analysis that is about understanding where and how to advertise everyone every company has a limited advertising budget no one has an unlimited budget so they have to understand which media met, uh, which uh, uh, media actually works best for them should i advertise in the newspaper should i advertise in magazine should i advertise online uh, which blogs should show my advertise online should i advertise on facebook linkedin google uh, should i advertise on radio which medium works best for me in terms of giving me the highest return on my investment right uh sharik uh, you are asking me some questions i would absolutely appreciate if you uh, keep your questions towards the end of this presentation as i had directed earlier thank you for your patience then we move on to the financial sector the financial sector 
is one of the largest users of analytics across the world. And where does it largely use analytics? It uses analytics in order to ensure that its risk is minimized and to ensure better marketing of its products and services. So for instance, let's take a bank. A bank will have the highest usage of analytics in the risk side of it. So for instance, if you have ever applied for a loan or a credit card, you would have realized that these banks or companies actually end up taking a huge amount of data about you right from your bank statements to your income statements to your tax filings to your uh, addresses etc etc what do they exactly do with that data with that data they are trying to figure out whether you are going to make a good enough risk for them or not whether you are likely to default on the loan that they are going to give you whether you are likely to pay your credit card bills on time or not right so that is where these two uh, areas of usage, usage which is credit risk management and credit scorecard modeling actually come out where these banks create a scorecard and they give you a score and that score says whether you are likely to default or not how many of you have heard of the Sybil score CIBIL yes a few of you have heard about this Sybil score the Sybil score is a score about your credit history. Yes. Exactly. So that is a score which tells banks how likely you are to default. The higher the score, the less likelihood of your default. And how do they come across, come over that, come up, I mean, uh, create that score about you by analyzing your data and comparing it with the historical data of people they have who have defaulted, who have not defaulted. So they are trying to understand what kind of people actually default. What, what are the key variables which actually lead to default within your data? Then there is fraud detection. Fraud detection is about or rather used a lot in both the credit card industry again and also in the insurance industry. In the insurance side, Quite frequently, insurance companies come across fraudulent claims. They need to understand which claims are genuine, which claims are fraudulent. And they can do that by doing statistical analysis of their historical data to figure out what exactly are the key factors behind fraudulent claims, how to identify those fraudulent claims. So they create a model and they put all the claims data through that model. And that model then comes up again with a probability that these claims are fraudulent, these claims are genuine. Again, in the credit card industry, if someone is using a credit card, uh, the companies like Visa or MasterCard, they have to understand whether that usage is genuine or it is a fraudulent usage. And they have to stop the fraudulent usage in real time. Then there is stock market analysis where I mean it is no longer just about analyzing stocks and figuring out which one to buy by looking at the financial statements of the company. All of us understand that stocks move a lot based on sentiments of people actually trading in the market based on news based on politics etc. So it is extremely important now to understand how the sentiment is moving whether the sentiment around a particular stock or market is positive or not whether if it is negative should should the stock be sold should the stock be held on or not so you can actually take in all that text data from let's say twitter around a certain company or stock you can take in text data from various stock message boards and try to understand whether that text is giving you a positive sentiment whether people are talking positively about it or negatively about it this is a special field something called as text mining or text analytics or sentiment analytics which uses some kind of statistical techniques to figure out whether the sentiments are positive negative or neutral so moving on to the other domain which is let's say of managing customer relationships so across companies everyone collects customer feedback they collect it through uh, their online websites i mean they collect it through their websites they collect it through phone they collect it through special feedback campaigns uh, they can collect this feedback through uh, handwritten forms so all that data 
needs to be organized and collected in one place and then you need to figure out what exactly is the customer feedback at an overall level where is the company doing well where is it not doing well what are the frequent pain points what are the points where uh, things are looking good so companies can actually utilize all this customer feedback data analyze it to improve their customer service right analysis of loyalty and membership benefits so loyalty and membership benefits i mean uh, all of us may have some kind of a loyalty card from various retail stores right a shopper stock card or a pantaloons or a big bazaar card right so what do these cards actually do obviously they give you loyalty points when you have purchased something but at the same time they help the companies keep track of what exactly are you purchasing right when are you purchasing what kind of a customer are you are you a frequent customer do you purchase low uh, uh, i mean low quantities very frequently do you purchase high quantities uh, at very uh one can say at periodic times what kind of a customer are you so this kind of understanding of your customers actually helps these stores to figure out how best to target you with various offers to how best to target you how best to market to you using more kind of personalized kind of marketing and advertising everyone understands that the more personalized the advertising more personalized the products and services the higher the chance that you will end up using it and within marketing within customer relationship management it is the the main goal is to make it as personalized as possible and the only way to do it is by gaining as much understanding about the customer as possible by analytics then there is churn management churn management is something which is very important in the telecom industry because of mobile number portability it has become very easy for people to actually shift their services from one service provider to another these telecom companies they want to understand which people are likely to leave their service in the next few months and move on to their competitors they actually want to predict the people who are their subscribers who are going to do that and the only way to do it by is by analyzing historical data of people who have left and trying to figure out why did they leave right so that is about churn management then within the hr industry it is manpower resource planning right planning for resources in the long term for the short term trying to predict the projects that you are going to get trying to predict the kind of resources you are going to need for that and how we are going to actually bring out uh, or keep those resources available at that exact point of time creating a hiring strategy what kind of people to hire should we hire from let's say from the best campuses in the country or should we hire from tier 2 campuses in the country which kind of people actually perform well and are most loyal to the company right those are the kind of people ideally you would want to hire and that is what you try to figure out by analyzing data of your employees profitability management trying to figure out how what is the best uh, or what is the optimum level of incentives and salaries and bonuses that could be provided to your employees to ensure retention at the same time ensure that you the company makes reasonable profits so even within the hr industry a lot of analytics is being used a lot of uh, hr processes are now being based on data analysis retail analytics so if any of i mean all of us have gone to a retail store and if you look at how the products are placed on the shelves and if you think that they are just placed there randomly as per the whims and fancies of the people in the store think again a lot of science and analysis of data has gone behind as to why a certain product has been kept on a certain shelf why is a certain product at eye level and why is a certain product right at the bottom shelf why is a certain product at the back of the store and why is a certain product placed at the checkout counter so a lot of analysis has gone behind as to how people actually purchase these products are some pr products purchased just on impulse 
are some products so essential that people will go around the store searching for them in the process picking up a few other things that they thought that they had never imagined that they'll be buying so a lot of science has gone behind the shelf space allocation part of retail stores trying to figure out whether customers prefer the store brands or the actual branded products right so as to ensure higher profitability for the store ensure that more store brands are purchased these companies try to figure out which kind of customers prefer store brands and which kind of customers prefer brand names pricing decisions on products where should we give a discount where should we increase the pricing etc etc creating promotions bundling products together what kind of products sell together what kind of uh, products will never sell together so all that kind of analysis goes on as far as retail stores go media analytics how to allocate the air time of a new tv show for advertising what can be the prime time rates for advertisements uh, analyzing channel viewerships so all that is about media analytics also so guys these are just a few domains or areas where analytics is used and within those domains and areas a few uses of analytics within these domains itself there could be there are many many more ways in which data can be uh, used to analyze and make decisions and there are many other domains like uh, like supply chain logistics uh, uh, manufacturing where analytics can be used to a large extent so let's move on to some case studies let's try to understand how companies are using analytics so here's a quiz for you there are three pictures on your screen i want you to tell me what is the common story linking these three pictures right on the left is a box of kellogg strawberry pop tarts on the right is a picture of a hurricane which is about to strike the united states and in the middle is a bottle of beer what exactly is common between these three pictures anyone with an answer pradeep you say fmcg yeah i mean what exactly about fmcg vishal impact mass of people okay I, i don't see beer impacting mass of people or popcorn impacting mass of people mm, karthik data which it generates at each stage of the cycle uh, i don't see popcorn generating any data karthik padmanab you are saying popcorn along with beer is preferred preferred by whom and what does what does the hurricane have to do with popcorn and beer madhav says collect these before hurricane strikes so madhav before the hurricane strikes you are going to collect popcorn and beer hmm going to have a nice time is it mhm any other bright answers maruti if hurricane comes what to buy okay so what you guys are saying is that if a hurricane is going to strike people are going to run out and buy beer and popcorn okay let let me put this question to you let's say a hurricane is going to strike you tomorrow at in your city what exactly are you going to do right what kind of products do you want to buy what kind of products will you go out and buy what kind of things will you go out and buy when a cyclone or a hurricane is about to hit your city daily essential says sairam okay karthik says buy essential supplies food water warm clothing wonderful ranjit essential items okay anand basic supplies again ready to eat foods basic necessity great 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 okay so some of you will also go out and buy beer because you'll be stuck at home offices will be closed you'll have nothing to do so you will sit and drink beer great okay 
but a majority of you think that you will go out and buy daily essentials right that is what you think you will go out and buy now if you are a retail store in the city what would you stock up on what would you stock up on if you are a retail store in the city daily essentials again right as anand says right now milk and bread okay mm -hmm. daily items groceries etc etc right that is what your gut feel tells you correct yeah palak could stock up on maggi but it's banned right now i know palak i would also stock up on maggi unfortunate that it's still banned yeah great so as a retail store owner you are going to stock up on daily essentials is what you are suggesting that is what your gut feel or intuition tells you stock up on daily essentials because people are going to buy daily essentials so now let me tell you the answer as to what's common between these two things i mean it's not exactly the answer as such but the common thread here is walmart and analytics now what about walmart and analytics so here's the story behind these three pictures the story is that i mean it's a real story it's not a fairy tale but uh, in 2005 a uh, hurricane was about to strike hurricane frances was about to strike the florida coast of united states and executives at walmart sat down for a meeting and thought about the kind of uh, products that they need to stock up on in their stores in florida because the hurricane was going to be quite severe so uh, a lot of the executives uh, who were there in the meeting the supply chain guys the procurement guys they said yeah we are going to stock up on daily essentials as many of you guys said milk bread eggs emergency items like uh, flashlights batteries ropes uh, tools etc etc because that's what people are going to purchase when they uh, come to the store before this hurricane is going to strike so at that time the chief information officer of walmart was also in this um, in this meeting and she said let's hang on here guys let's not reach an immediate conclusion let's see what the data actually tells us and she called upon her analytics people and said why don't you guys analyze the data in terms of what had happened when in our stores when a hurricane just a few weeks back had also struck in the same place in in the same state of florida uh, just a few weeks back another hurricane had struck florida so she wanted her guys to analyze what actually sold in their stores at that time and these guys then went back analyzed tons of data because you know how big walmart stores are you know the number of products they sold sell the number of people who purchase from them on a daily basis huge number of people and the large number of stores they would have in florida so when they went back and an analyzed the tons of data and they came up with some very interesting findings what they found was that in the week before that hurricane had actually struck the sales of kellogg strawberry pop tarts was seven times its average annual weekly sales the sales had jumped seven times what it would sell in an average week and beer in that week was the largest selling item think about it what your gut feel and intuition for some of you told you that i am going to stock up on daily essentials only would you have ever thought about stop stocking up on popcorn or stocking up on beer maybe maybe not and that is what exactly happened with the walmart executives they actually never came to the conclusion that something like these two products could be in such heavy demand before a hurricane is going to strike right so this is what analytics actually does quite often it will go against the gut feel and intuition of most of the managers and people against the experience of what these people say and what walmart did was apart from of course daily essentials they stocked up on beer popcorn and by the time the hurricane struck they they had 
kind of ensured that their sales would boom even in such bad times right so this is an ex interesting example of analytics here's another case study again from the retail sector which is from target how target figured out that a teenage girl was pregnant before her father did here's another interesting example of how analytics can create so much controversy also so the story here is that one day an angry father walked into a target store in the united states and said or rather called for the manager when the ma when he met the manager he showed him some discount coupons on baby products which were addressed to his daughter and he told him my daughter is still 16 years old are you trying to encourage her to become pregnant by sending her discount coupons on baby products the manager was a bit uh, uh, puzzled i mean it was not his department to show, send these coupons so he was trying to figure out how that girl got those coupons so he said let me get back to you in a couple of days i'll check with my people in the head office and get back to you so the next day before the manager was actually able to find out something the angry father called out called up again and said and this time he was not angry this time he was pretty apologetic he said look sorry about yesterday it seems or it is that my daughter is actually pregnant and this was something that we came to know only about yesterday when we asked her so how did target actually figure out that this girl was pregnant and her family didn't know about it i mean target didn't know her that girl personally she was just a customer for them so the story again behind this story is that some time back the executives at target wanted to figure out a way to capture the baby products market they wanted to ensure that anyone who has delivered uh, kids uh, and is looking to purchase uh, things for them should actually be purchasing them from target and one way to do that was to send those people discount coupons but how to figure out who those people are who those women are who are actually pregnant so they went again to their analytics guys and what these analytics guys did was they they had some data relating to women whom they knew were pregnant and who were purchasing products from them and they actually analyzed the data of their purchases and they figured out that there are some highly common items which are frequently purchased together by these pregnant women and almost in the case of all these pregnant women those products were there in their basket so then they created an analytics model which worked on or which analyzed the data of all the purchases made by women in their store whether pregnant or not and if those products were there in the basket of those women they gave them a pregnancy high pregnancy score if those products were not there they gave them a low pregnancy score so based on that data whoever had a higher pregnancy score got those discount coupons and whoever didn't didn't get those coupons so that pregnancy score was nothing but a probability of that woman being pregnant and that is how target actually figured out that this teenage girl was pregnant because she had started purchasing those particular products and she had started stop purchasing some other particular products and that is where she got those discount coupons so a very interesting example of how you can understand more about your customers without actually even knowing them you can figure out something so personal as whether a woman is pregnant or not and Uh, this is a case study about what i spoke about earlier market basket analysis figuring out what kind of products go into the basket of a, a customer together here's another case study by airtel uh now all of us or rather a lot of us may have come across these ads by airtel where they talk about my airtel my offer and they have created these offers for specific kind of people so isd offers best talk time offers internet and sms offers etc 
and they actually targeted particular people with particular offers how did they target that they figured it out by segmenting the customers into various groups based on their usage history which customers are using more of internet which customers or subscribers are doing more of local calls which uh, subscribers are doing more international calls right so they segmented their customers into various different groups and to each group which fell into those particular buckets they sent across these offers so this is an example of customer segmentation right yeah as palak says customize plans based on the call history and usage so now think about the fact that airtel has 269 million customers across the globe it handles 8 billion calls a day that's 8 billion calls every day and it has 1.3 million retail partners across 400000 villages think about the amount of data that it has to go through to actually come up with this kind of segmentation it has to analyze your usage history over the last several months to figure out what kind of person you are and it has to do that across 269 million people can you even think of this much data it's tremendous amount of data so it is petabytes of data which are generated and needs to be analyzed let's say as far as the telecom industry is concerned to do what to ensure customer retention i spoke about churn management earlier where it is important for the telecom industry so customer retention is there customer acquisition is there you have to ensure also optimum network performance by constantly analyzing your network data and figure out what is the optimal pricing for each of your plans so a lot of analytics now goes behind doing all of this stuff so again none of this is based any longer on the understanding or the gut feel or intuition of the manager but it is based on analyzing data here are some other interesting uses of analytics so again the picture on the left is that of a movie or a book called as moneyball what is this about anyone seen this movie or read the book anand has great anand madhav no okay no problem so someone has at least okay that's right kartik kartik has gone through it okay so for those of you who don't know what this is about so moneyball is actually a true story it is the true story of a baseball team which which in 2002 was placed at the absolute bottom of its league in the united states so in the united states baseball league it was the last team and in that season a lot of its key players had good players had left it for other other teams at the same time the team was facing a huge money crunch a huge budget crunch so they were finding it difficult to get other good players so what did the manager here in this movie played by brad pitt do well he came across a uh, uh, an ivy league graduate who said that he had figured out a metric on which he could actually rank baseball players and he said that that metric correlates very well with the team winning matches right so if that baseball player has performed well on that metric it's quite highly correlated to his team winning the match so brad pitt asked him to come up with the rankings of all the baseball players in the league based on that metric and also figure out which ones were available at a low cost so this guy went ahead did that created an entire list of the baseball players in the league based on that metric figured out which ones were within the budget of the team and said these are the five or seven guys who are likely to perform well and at the same time are not very highly valued so the manager then went ahead purchased those players for his team convinced them to join his team and in the next season in they the team went on a 20 match winning streak they won 20 matches in a row and this was the start or one can say the possible start of where 
analytics started being used in sports these days these kind of techniques are used by almost all teams across all professional sports be it football leagues in europe or even our indian premier league where teams actually use this kind of strategy to figure out which players to purchase and this is another example of how analytics can be used in hr remember i spoke about hiring strategy so creating a hiring strategy where people are not expensive at the same time are likely to perform well for you great right so this is where analytics actually gained a huge momentum especially in the sports world and came a lot into public consciousness yes anand that's exactly correct so it was the boston red sox who actually ended up using this strategy in a big way though it was not developed by them and uh, became one of the most famous baseball teams in history uh, it's it's a term called as cyber metrics you can look it up later on the picture on the middle is that of barack obama who's called as the big data president why is he called as the big data president because he used a lot of analytics in his 2012 re-election campaign to uh, to basically get himself re-elected he figured out what through analytics by analyzing voters data by analyzing people's data as to what were their problems what were their issues which uh, voters were actually undecided between him and his rival and how could they be convinced to vote for him so he had a huge analytics team working for him and based on the kind of inputs they provided he was able to get himself re-elected and that is where he is now known as the big data president the picture on the right is that of mickey mouse so what exactly is mickey mouse doing here mickey mouse is owned by walt disney and today if you go to any of disney's theme parks across the world in florida paris hong kong etc they will actually give you an electronic wristband to wear that electronic wristband will track your moment movement across the park it will figure out which rides you are interested in it will figure out which kind of uh, uh, products you are purchasing from the stores where exactly are you eating and based on that understanding it will figure out what kind of a customer you are uh, based on that i mean let's say they figure out that uh, you, your kids are quite interested in uh, characters like donald duck and they are quite interested in characters like mini mouse then they will give you offers on merchandise which is related to those characters so they are going to track your movement they are going to track all the data that you generate in the park and they are going to collect that data analyze it and give you more personalized give you a more personalized experience in the park right so this uh, these are examples of how analytics are not just used in industry but also used in sports politics entertainment etc the reason we gave you a few varied uh, case studies of how analytics is being used is just to tell you that it is not restricted to any particular domain it can be used across the board anywhere that you have data analytics can be used so let's talk about some analytical to analytics tools and technologies here i mean analytics as i told you earlier is based on three things computer technology statistics and domain knowledge so this is where the computer technology part comes in where you have to use certain tools to actually help you analyze the data you are not going to analyze the data manually you are not going to use a calculator to analyze data you are going to use certain tools to do it for you and those tools are very popular tools which are used to do statistical analysis of data are r and sas so r is a free and open source software which helps you to do statistical analysis of data helps you manage and clean data helps you visualize data it's a very very popular tool it is absolutely free and anyone and everyone can use it as the as long as they know how to use it sas is also an extremely popular tool but it is a commercial license software which is quite expensive and uh, a lot of the large companies continue to use sas though a lot of the smaller companies have shifted over to r and sas also does the same things as r uh, both r and sas are actually two different languages 
uh, so those are the languages that you use to write some basic codes to actually do the analysis of the data so sas is also quite popular and uh, as i said it is a commercial software wps is a clone of sas in terms of the language but it is much cheaper than sas spss is also another statistical analysis tool which is now owned by ibm kxn again another statistical tool which is owned by sap and statistica again similar kind of tool now owned by dell right so the top uh, the, the six tools uh, on uh, on the first two rows are actually tools which help you do statistical analysis of data help you create those statistical models on humongous amounts of data then you have tools like tableau and tipco spotfire which help you do data visualization so these are tools which help you actually create very interesting and interactive charts and tables and maps of your data so that you are able to figure out what your data is saying in just one glance right so these are data visualization tools and of course excel is one of the most popular tools used across the world but it can at max help you do more basic analysis of data and it cannot really work on large amount of data which is like millions of data points because excel has a significant limitation to it yes anand click view is also a data visualization tool uh, tableau just like tableau and tipco spotfire which is used in business intelligence creating reports dashboards that's what these tools are used for let's talk about careers in analytics now so what's the market buzz on analytics well as per nascom india's analytics market is set to double to 2.3 billion dollars by 2018 ibm says 83% business leaders globally have identified analytics as their top priority top priority for ceos 83% of ceos across the world McKinsey talks about a shortage of one and a half million business analytics professionals by 2018, and this is just the figure for the United States. It's not even the figure for the entire world. So imagine the shortage across the world. Times of India, of course, talks about India becoming a global analytics hub. Next big job boom is in analytics. 250,000 job openings in this field over the next two years. starting salaries in the region of 5 to 9 lakhs per annum and uh, indian companies are grooming data scientists to feed global job demand so a huge buzz across the world again on analytics uh, career on the analytics industry what does the data actually tells us tell us so if you have looked up indeed.com which is a global job portal it provides something called as a job trends engine the job trends engine if you put in a certain term into it tells you what is the kind of variation in jobs available in for this particular term across a certain period of time so if you actually put in predictive analytics over there this is the kind of chart that it will give you look at the tremendous growth which is there in jobs for predictive analytics across the world look at the figure on the left hand side huge growth huge huge growth in predictive analytics jobs across the world and this is where the huge entire boom is coming through for analytics what can data scientists expect to earn in india at the entry level about 6 to 8 lakhs per annum lateral hires get about 15 to 25 lakhs senior advisors get about 25 plus lakhs per annum right so these are great salaries to have and much higher than what the regular it industry can pay right which are the companies hiring in analytics well let's take a few areas now first of all this is not an exhaustive list there are many more industries and many more companies hiring within each industry as far as analytics is concerned these are just a few examples of them so within the it industry you have everyone from infosys to ibm to accenture to tcs for pro all the big it companies and even now the smaller it companies who have creating large analytics teams as their next big vertical 
given the slowdown in the other parts of the IT industry, analytics is the big booming area now. And that is where all these IT companies are moving to. Then the analytics outsourcers like Mu Sigma, Fractal Analytics, Absolute Data, Latent View. These are all companies which do only analytics consulting and outsourcing work. They are like the early versions of the IT companies like Infosys, IBM, Accenture. Uh, I mean Infosys, TCS, Wipro. These are the analytics versions of them. Then you have the retail industry. I spoke about several case studies from retail. So obviously retail is one of the largest users of analytics, largest data generators and one of the large hirers of analytics professionals. Then consultants. Consultants are setting up huge analytics teams because a lot of the consulting is now moving to data based consulting. Earlier, the consultants used to act more out of understanding the business gut feel intuition. But now given that things are moving towards data driven decision making consultants are also setting up huge analytics teams. So you have PwC, KPMG, Deloitte, McKinsey, Boston Analytics, BCG, etc. Hiring analytics professionals. But of course, this is not an exhaustive list. There are many more companies here. Then you have other industries like telecom. Again, I spoke about Airtel's case study. So huge amounts of data are being generated in the telecom industry. So a lot of analytics work going on there. Financial services, which continues to be one of the largest users of analytics, one of the largest employers of analytics professionals, one of the largest providers of consulting work for analytics. Healthcare, which is the new area where analytics is booming significantly. Again, a lot of data being generated there and a lot of analytics work being carried out there. Sorry, just give me one second while I charge my laptop. Then e-commerce and social media companies, right? So for them, analytics is actually their bread and butter. With they are they were one of the earliest users of analytics and they are one of the biggest benefiters of beneficiaries of analytics. So for them, no business can exist without analytics. So what do you need to become an analytics professional? The tangibles that you need are good domain or functional understanding, especially if you are at a slightly senior level. If you are at a junior level, it's fine if you do not have the domain understanding that understanding will get, get built up over a period of time. But you need to have good problem solving skills at all levels. You need to understand how to logic, uh, how to think uh, logically, how to logically solve business problems. Because analytics is all about solving business problems. So that is the kind of skill you definitely need. You need to have good applied statistics knowledge, right? Because this is all about using statistics to analyze data and hence applied statistics knowledge is required, not theoretical knowledge, but how, when, where, why to apply a certain statistical technique, how to create a statistical model, how to interpret the output of the model. That is the kind of knowledge that you need, not the theoretical part of statistics. You need hands on skills on Excel, R, SAS, SPSS because you have to use these tools to analyze your data. At least one or two tools you should know. And you should be trained in understanding business problems, statistical techniques, deriving the business insights from the statistical output and communicating those insights because communication is also fairly important, especially because to the business team. Then the intangibles are that you should obviously have a flair for logic and numbers. You need to have good communication skills. You should be inquisitive. You need to have a hunger to learn because this is a fast changing industry. Tools and technologies keep changing and hence you have to keep learning new things. So the tangibles are, I mean the intangibles are something you have to bring on board. The tangibles are something that we at Advancer can help you with. So now that I am at the end close to the end of my presentation. I just want to talk, take you through a few details about the courses that we have on analytics if uh, I can have your patience for just a short while about another five minutes. 
so how advancer is going to help you so at advancer we are your launching pad into what is the hottest career in the market today which is analytics and big data here you can train in all the latest tools and technologies so that when you start using them within your area of work or when you want to shift jobs you can confidently use them without having to be trained again our training courses are designed in such a way that they are extremely practical extremely hands on and these the skills that we give you are the ones which are required by employers right employers require these skills from you if you want to work for them in analytics and you will learn from experts who have years of industry experience with them in analytics at the end of our courses we give you certificates once you successfully complete the course criteria so once you complete that we give you our certificate so what is the certified business analytics professional course about this is a fundamental course in business analytics for anyone interested in creating a career in business analytics this is the course you need to start with you you will learn here how to solve business problems through data using tools such as r and analytics techniques so the tool that we cover here within this course is r which is the most popular tool across the world today and various analytics techniques which are used in predictive analytics you will learn through real world case studies I and mean, we are not just going to teach you theory here we are going to make sure that you understand that theory by how it is implemented in the real world through various case studies the course is going to deliver analytics professionals who are well armed to deliver on the job on day one so you don't need to be trained once you start working in analytics again you are fairly well equipped to start on your job on day one and that is what companies actually love that they are able to hire people who who can actually start working as soon as they are hired and this course has been designed by industry veterans who have 30 years of experience between them so they know exactly what industry requires and that is what they have put into the course <clears throat> so what are the details about the course well we do it through the online training method just like today where you have listened to me over the last one and a half hours almost uh, each and every class will be conducted through this mode live interactive while where i was asking you questions you are answering you are asking me questions but i told you to hold off to your questions till the end of the class today because of the large number of participants but uh, during the actual course when we have fewer number of participants you will be able to ask your questions as soon as you want them answered so it's 60 hours of live instructor led training by experienced analytics experts you have all advantages of classroom learning while you can be happily seated at home you can easily interact with the faculty and instructors through voice video and chat uh, right now you are using chat but during the course you can also speak and ask your questions if you want when do our batches start well we have batches running almost every month so Uh, our next weekend batch starts on 5th september it's saturday and sunday 9 to 12 in the morning for 10 such weekends right 10 saturdays 10 sundays 3 hours each a total of 60 hours of training starting 5th september if someone wants to go for a weekday kind of daily kind of learning then we start the batch on 21st of september monday to friday every day one and a half hours 7:30 to 9 o'clock in the morning right so if you have time in the morning to spare and you want to learn on a daily basis instead of just on weekends you can do it through the 21st september batch what you get is 24 by 7 lifetime access to course material and recorded sessions and you get a certificate of excellence in business analytics once you successfully complete the real life project and the final exam and the fees for this course is 32000 but currently till 26th august you can get a discount of 20% and uh, enroll for just 25500 rupees that's all and you can enroll online at this link uh i'm just going to paste this link into the chat box and send it to you all 
so you can click on it and enroll yourself uh, as before 26th august to uh, get the discounted offer right so guys just hold on for two minutes i'll just shortly take up your questions what are the program details well initially we'll start off with the introduction to analytics talk about the analytics methodology through a case study through a real world case study then we'll take you through the basics of r the fundamentals of r for about nine to ten hours then we'll set the base of business analytics by taking you through basic statistics data visualization data preparation and cleaning for another about 18 to 20 hours and then finally we'll move on to predictive analytics for about 30 hours in total where we'll take you through various statistical techniques like linear regression logistic regression clustering decision trees time series forecasting and at the end take you through again another final real world case study discussion for about a couple of classes where we take you end to end as to how an analytics project is done so this way you get an extremely hands-on practical knowledge of analytics and apart from this you will be working on a project also side by side so that way you will also be working on it on an absolute end-to-end -end analytics project yeah who are the faculty they are industry professionals who have four to ten years of experience in business analytics they have years of training experience and they come from premier institutes like iits bits isi iams etc so these are some of the best faculty that you can find in analytics today people who have years of industry experience people who have years of training experience and who come with the best kind of education possible okay so today i can proudly say that advancer has one of the best faculties in the industry what are the prerequisites basically you need just a bachelor's or master's degree or you should be currently studying for a bachelor's or master's degree what you need is a comfort factor with numbers and learning statistics we don't expect you to know stats already we will teach you from the basics and most importantly we are not turning you into statisticians here we are going to teach you statistics from an applied perspective how exactly you are going to apply statistics to solve business problems we are not going to make you theoretical statisticians so don't worry if you don't know statistics or have kind of forgotten it what you need is a love for business logic and structured thinking because what you are doing is as i told you earlier solving business problems and hence logical thinking is very important structured thinking is very important the experience levels type age non programming background are not really constraints here right so whatever be your experience levels whether you have done programming in the past or not what kind of experience you come from they are not constraints that is absolutely fine whatever backgrounds you have Uh, some of the other courses or the other versions are the same course the business analytics course we offer through a self-paced version where you learn at your own time and at your own pace through recorded videos of the previous batches classes so this is more of self-learning whenever you want you can log in you can go through the videos learn at your own time at your own pace and you get faculty support for any doubts or queries through our forum or through email or through calls and the course content and the certificate are the same as the live online training version there is no difference there this is just more for those who can't spare the time at those particular batches time we have or want to learn at their own time and pace and are comfortable doing self learning uh, you will have lifetime access to content and hence no time limit to complete the course and there are no batches you are learning on your own at your own time so you can start learning today if you want the fees for this version is actually 20000 but we are currently again offering a 20% discount till 26th of august so that works out to 15990 then we have the certified base sas expert course which again is done through more of a self paced video based methodology so you get trained on the sas tool which i spoke about earlier you learn the fundamentals of the sas language and you learn at your own time and pace through 24 hours of recorded videos 
you again get full faculty support for any doubts or queries and lifetime access to content and videos and you can also prepare for the SAS certified base programmer for SAS 9 global certification exam which is actually conducted by SAS they conduct these exams at all kinds of locations across the world and you just need to register with them for giving that exam pay them about 180 dollars as their fees and you can go ahead give that exam and if you score 70 percent they give you the certificate which is highly recognized in the in industry and uh, we will help you prepare for this certification by giving you access to preparation material and you can also take three mock exams to get prepared for this certification the fees for this course after discount is 9900 till the 26th of august and uh, we have a course on something called as hadoop and big data hadoop is actually a software framework which helps you do management and processing of large amounts of data and this is live instructor led online training for 36 hours over six weekends for anyone who's a software developer a tester a mainframe professional a data warehousing guy or those who want to move on to be data scientists this is the course that you also need to do uh, you may need some prior knowledge of programming uh, in any object oriented language preferably java so if you have that kind of background this course will be highly suitable for you and our next weekend batch starts on 26 september the fees for this course is 20000 rupees again till 26th of august after discount okay so i have completed my part of uh, the uh, discussion today now i'm going to open up the floor for questions so any questions that you may have please uh, feel free to ask right okay so let me take your questions one by one i'll come to your questions so kindly be patient right so i'll start with sonia's question would the course of course fee of 25500 also include training on sas as well no sonia it wouldn't but if you as you saw the course on sas is separate and that costs 9900 separately but if you take it along with our business analytics course then we can offer it to you at a total fee of 33000 so that's 25500 plus 9900 would work out to 35500 you can get a, a further discount if you purchase them together for just 33,000. Mother, we start batches every month. So if you can't join in September, you can join in October. We will keep you updated on the dates. Padmana, uh, we don't expect you to have any basic or any prior knowledge of stats. We, as I said earlier, we are going to teach you from the basics onwards and we are not really looking to make you statisticians also here. So whatever you learn will be from an applied perspective. Kaiser, you are asking what is the acceptance of your certification in the world? Well, Kaiser, I can't speak about the world as such, but within India, a lot of companies and corporates know us. They are they work with us to hire people also. And uh, in terms of uh, we also train for a lot of large corporates across the world, across India. So uh, a lot of MNCs also. So our certification is quite well accepted in the industry. Uh, so again, uh, just uh, one question, which is from Sairam. What is the difference between business analytics and data scientist? Okay, Sairam. So that's a good question. I would say business analytics is a subset of data science. Data science is the all encompassing framework of uh, the world of analytics or the world of data and data scientist is someone who knows not only the tools like r and sas but also know and also knows how to do statistical analysis of data but also knows how to work with other tools like hadoop and hive and pig to actually do the management and processing of data so a data scientist as far as his knowledge is concerned is uh, the knowledge base is far more and far varied uh, against a business analytics professional a data scientist is also someone who needs uh, uh, who needs to be good at programming 
and he he should be someone who has some decent domain knowledge also right so a data scientist is someone let's say who you can become after a few years of experience and after you have learned all these kinds of various tools and technologies so if anyone is telling you of course that a data science scientist is someone who knows just r and sas uh, that is not correct a data scientist will also be expected to know a lot of other things as i said earlier like hadoop like uh, big data uh, various big data technologies uh, needs to be good at programming and he needs to be well versed with the business experience okay i have a long list of questions from maruti so i am going to take them one by one uh, maruti would have appreciated if you could have asked them one by one so that others don't need to wait but let me quickly answer your questions so you are asking can we download the training videos for future reuse or always need to log in and view online so maruti you won't be able to download these videos but you can log in whenever you want for your lifetime 24 by 7 and view them online our other course material of course which are pdfs and reading material can be downloaded uh in the time allocated for each topic how much time is allocated for case study so i would say at least uh, 40% of the time will be devoted to the case study within each topic uh if you have any case study will you be able to help us in solving guiding i mean of course if you have some kind of uh, project to work on we are always help, happy to help you in terms of guiding you as to how to solve that uh your other question is what is the volume of data and number of features involved so you are asking from the perspective of case studies i believe so i think each case study uh especially when it comes to the predictive modeling part is real world in nature so there are case studies which have tens of thousands of uh, observations and many different kind of variables involved so you will be working on real world data when it comes to actually doing the predictive modeling part uh we have case studies from the banking industry in fact the project that you will be working on is from the banking industry maruti and uh, the total number of case studies well uh, i'm not exactly aware of the total number but as i said the each and every topic will have a certain case study with it at the end there will be one full length case study and there will be a project for which you have to work on which will be your other case study so there are numerous numerous case studies for you to work on how much time will it take for the project to complete you will work start working on the project along with the classes and uh, after the classes end we'll give you about 20 to 25 days to complete the project yeah uh we will not be covering text analytics uh, within this course uh maruti it's not exactly correct that r can handle small amount of data r is being used today to handle large amounts of data also by working with things like hadoop and similarly sas can handle also large amounts of data by working with hadoop so if you are talking about big data then you also need to learn the hadoop framework and how to use that and work with r to actually analyze huge amounts of data and no we are not going to cover hadoop within this course as you would have seen hadoop is a separate course by itself uh so the kind of predictive analytics techniques that i am going to, we are going to cover in this course are regression techniques clustering time series decision trees random forest yeah yes and we are going to teach you model validation and testing of the models also uh dinesh your question i am going to come up to now uh, you are asking it was informed during the end of the session that programming knowledge is required for ba training no dinesh that's not correct programming knowledge will be required for the hadoop and big data course not for the business analytics course as you can see here for the hadoop and big data course prior knowledge of programming may be required uh roshan within our course we'll be training you on r if you want to learn sas we have this separate course on sas and if you want to learn hadoop we have another course on hadoop 
so whichever tool you are interested in or you want to learn you can take up that course aman you are pursuing your mba in marketing which course would be more preferable aman the business analytics course would work the best for you so within this course you are not only going to learn r but you are also going to learn how to solve business problems using predictive analytics and as an mba in marketing you have to learn analytics because marketing now is solely data based aruna your question is how important is domain knowledge and management knowledge for this course so aruna for this course domain knowledge and management knowledge is not required because this is not a domain specific course this is a general course in analytics which can be applied across domains as far as working in analytics is concerned if you do not have domain knowledge then you will need to build up that knowledge to work as an eventual consultant for your clients if you don't want to work as a consultant you can work as a subject matter expert who understands analytics techniques and who understands how to implement them but need not understand the domain as such and as far as placements are concerned yes we provide placement assistance within the course once you complete the course get our certificate we will help you with resume preparation we will help you with interview preparation and we will help sending your, in terms of sending your cvs to companies who are in touch with us and uh, we will also keep you updated on jobs available in the market yes anand the fee amount is inclusive of tax ranveer you are saying your graduation is not complete uh, so if you are currently studying ranveer the course uh, you should be okay in terms of doing this course and you should still be okay in terms of doing this course even if your graduation is not complete uh, but the only thing is that eventually when you look for a job companies will look for those who have completed their graduation so you just need to keep that in mind yes guys are you can take uh, uh, we have a package where you can take uh, 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 two or three courses together so you can combine the business analytics and saas course and uh, as i said that will cost you 33000 you can combine the business analytics saas and hadoop courses for 44000 so all our courses together you you can pay 44000 and do all our courses so dinesh you say you are into people management but not interested in learning any new programming knowledge and want to use analytics for your team so dinesh the point is analytics fine you will learn analytics but eventually how are you going to analyze the data you need some tool to analyze the data and that tool is r or saas and r or saas are languages which are easy to learn they are not difficult to learn so people who have no programming background also quite easily cope with learning these languages anand uh, you are asking how many people needed to start a private batch so anand uh, you'll just need to get in touch with us separately for that offline and uh, we can help you out on that palak your question is how different are r and saas if we intend to learn them together so they are significantly different palak in terms of the the fact that they are two different languages so for instance you will just to give you an analogy it is like learning english and it is like learning hindi two different languages but in the end their goal is the same to do statistical analysis of data to help you do data management and cleaning so the goal is the same they are just two different languages which you have to learn prerna in case you have missed uh, we do not have any physical classrooms we do only online classes just like the one which you are currently attending so only online classes we don't have classrooms in any location anywhere you will join these classes from home just like you are doing today damodar your question is where those trained from advance are placed in this field many people have got a job in analytics damodar after doing our course so uh, definitely people get jobs but i cannot say that everyone gets a job in the end uh, the background or the person also to an extent matters in the end what matters is the person's motivation levels 
so if you are highly motivated and in terms of looking for a job definitely you will get one but if you are just going to sit back put up your feet and say get a job for me that's not going to happen yes dinesh as i told you analytics will be useful for hr professionals i uh, i'm not sure if you were there at that point of time when i was talking about how analytics is being used in the hr industry it can be used to create hiring strategies it can be used to uh, under, uh, 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 undertake employee uh, employee retention it can be used for profitability management as far as understanding what is the optimum level to pay what are the optimum levels of incentives so it will be very useful for a people manager niranjan your question is what is the criteria for certification so niranjan you will have to complete a project in the course uh, we will get you to work on a project and once you complete it we will give you the certificate uh, palak uh, i am not sure what your uh, question is okay if we intend to learn sas and r together is it uh, advisable to do so palak what you would rather do is to learn them one after the other so you start with one and you once you finish that you can move on to the other one okay so that way you become an expert at one and then it will become easier to learn the other so for instance you can start with business analytics and r and then move on to learning sas through as the self paced version the only point of purchasing these two courses together is to get them at a discounted price that's all madhuresh your question is how will data analytics help in the lpo industry so i i guess you mean the legal process outsourcing industry so madhuresh i am not uh, very well aware of the lpo industry but what i can tell you is that if you are working with a lot of data then that data can be analyzed and you can help out your legal uh, corporate clients by uh, helping them understand for instance uh, prior judgments by helping them understand uh, which judgments go in favor which kind of i mean which kind of arguments tend to lead to favorable judgments which kind of arguments tend to lead to unfavorable judgments etc etc so this is just something i'm i'm kind of trying to figure out in terms of the legal process outsourcing industry i'm not too familiar with that industry so just uh, have probably do a google search and i'm sure you'll find something as far as analytics and legal is concerned uh, anand will storyboarding be a part of any of the training shared so anand when you say storyboarding what exactly are you referring to i'll just come back to your question when you have elaborated it anand mahesh why only r tool is being used for training mahesh it's not that only r tool is being used for training our focus is on training you on r and training you on predictive analytics and how to implement these analytics techniques using r the focus is on teaching you one tool at a time so that you learn it perfectly if we were to teach you three different tools at a time it's going to be very difficult for you to cope and that is why we have different courses for different purposes for sas we have a different course for hadoop we have a different course you can learn them one after the other that's not a problem but try to focus on one at a time ranjit your question is what kind of programming do we do in r tool is it like java or some other language no ranjit it is not like java or some other language it is a much higher level language which is far easier to work with it is an extremely intuitive language and people who have no programming backgrounds also work in r the point is r and sas uh, have actually been created to do statistical analysis and hence it is used by people or it was created by people who were earlier statisticians so definitely those guys were not programmers and hence they have not created Uh, hard to understand or learn programming language uh so how much time it will take to master the r tool i think ranjit as long as you keep practicing and keep revising it won't take you very long maybe a month or so to learn this tool uh maruti again you have come up with a list of questions uh, again would have appreciated if you had put them up one by one 
please don't put up all your questions at the same time uh, so again I have just uh, lost where exactly you are just one second I'll just come back to that question so in the time allocated for I think I already answered these questions Maruti so I would appreciate that you don't ask them again Sorry guys, I just lost where exactly we were in terms of the question list. Just give me one second. Yeah, I would also appreciate guys that if you enter your questions just once, I am going there through them one by one. If you repeat your questions, it becomes difficult for me. okay yeah uh, the next question is from sonia does the course material get updated basis latest trends etc yes sonia we keep updating our course material and since you have lifetime access to the course material you can keep getting updated yourself also right it does it won't cost you anything extra kaiser i have already answered your question uh, madhav will be sharing the recording of link of this session with you uh, tomorrow uh, how will we get access to R, SAS or other tools? Are they free? Yes, Madhav, R is a free and open source software. You can easily download it now and install it if you want. Uh, SAS also provides a free version of its software, which is used for training and education purpose. It is called as the SAS University Edition. So again, you will download and install SAS University Edition on your computer. And uh, Hadoop is also a free and open source framework. So again, can be easily installed on your computer. Damodar, I have already answered your question. Sairam, it will largely be the same faculty who will take the entire batch. So you will maintain, you will have the ability to create the familiarity with the faculty and the faculty will also be very familiar with you. It will create a bond which can last well beyond the course also. Maruti, your question is how can we deploy the analytics components in production? How can we see the model performance are after deploying? Are you going to cover that? So Maruti, it is about collecting fresh data based on uh, once the model has been deployed, you will continue to collect fresh data and testing your model to see whether it continues to work or not. So that will be covered in the course as such. Uh, Roshan, your question is ABAP enough to start with the Hadoop framework. So Roshan, uh, ideally you need to have some object oriented language understanding for Hadoop like C++, Java, .NET, etc. If you have that, that is wonderful. If you don't, we pro help you in terms of learning Java before the course starts. So we have a Java primer which is available with us in the form of videos. You can go through those videos and get yourself familiar with the basics of core Java which is all you require for the Hadoop and Big Data course. For the business analytics course, you don't need anything as such. Uh, Maruti, how can we implement the model created in R and SAS for Big Data? What is the role of us in doing it? So Maruti, I think uh, you are asking fairly detailed questions which will get answered during the course. I cannot take you through all of this at this moment. Uh, your other question is in hypothesis testing, what are we going to cover and ANOVA, are they enough for testing of modeling? Yes, Maruti, let me put it plain and simple terms for you. We are going to train you on all that is required for you to work in analytics. You do not need to worry about anything else. Yes, Damodar, the self-paced courses uh, also have the same certificate. Anand, no programming knowledge is needed for the SAS course. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, Sonia, you are into senior management and want to move to data analytics where you can work as an independent consultant. So Sonia, ideally you should learn business analytics with R and also the SAS course. You should go in for that kind of a package. 
Maruti, if you have 10 years of experience in mainframes, uh, definitely you can go in for both the business analytics course and the Hadoop and big data course. And uh, companies will be fairly open to hiring you. Damodar, there is no sense in keeping on asking the same question. You have already asked the same question 10 times. If you cannot hear me, I would suggest you give me a call. So Palak, uh, the R, SAS and Hadoop course together, if you want to take, uh, I think the course details are there in terms of the curriculum on our website. The duration is the business analytics and R course is 60 hours in total. The base SAS course is 24 hours of videos and the Hadoop course is 36 hours of live training. So all in total, that's about, uh, I would say, 120 hours of training. Roshan, you have four years experience in SAP ABAP and want to switch your career to big data and analytics. Which one is more suitable for you? So Roshan, I would say first uh, start with analytics with R, then move on to big data and Hadoop. Okay. Kaiser, you, have, you are from Pakistan. How many international students take your certification? Many international students take our certification, Kaiser. So at least 30% of our each of our batches come, uh, are students from abroad or outside India. Sairam Excel will not be covered in this course. Uh, yes, Madhav. So our email ID is available on right here. So you can take a look at our email ID and uh, get in touch with us. You can give us a call also on this number. Anand, can you sh uh, your question is, can you share a couple of examples of analytics in healthcare apart from sale of types of medicines in different areas or time of year? Okay, Anand, so in healthcare, let's take uh, two different areas. One is the pharmaceutical industry and one is hospitals. So in the pharmaceutical industry, huge amount of analytics is done when it comes to, let's say, uh, uh, basically working on creating new medicines. So in the area of clinical trials, a lot of data is being generated in terms of what kind of uh, uh, when it comes to trying to figure out what molecules work are working, what molecules are not working, what are the side effects. Uh, you you admin, administer these new medicines to patients uh, in the clinical trials industry. You collect the data from there and you analyze that data. So that is one area where analytics is used. The other area is for hospitals where let's say you want to predict patient readmissions, right? A patient got admitted in your hospital, you cured him, but what are the chances that he is going to get readmitted again? So hospitals want to predict that. You, you want to predict what leads to, let's say, heart disease. You want to predict what, or you want to figure out what kind of factors lead to cancer. So these are the type of applications of analytics in healthcare. Maruti, our SAS course covers only data management and data cleaning. It doesn't cover modeling. Anand, the, as far as storyboarding is concerned, where you're talking about using the outcome of the analysis to prepare a storyboard to present it to stakeholders. Uh, well, we will teach you how to communicate your insights in terms of interpreting your output, in terms of interpreting the statistical output in business language. But we won't be teaching you how to create presentations to present it to stakeholders. We won't go down to that kind of level. No. Okay. So, Sairam, your question is what are the job titles in industry uh, as far as analytics is concerned? So you start off as an analyst, then you move on to becoming a senior analyst, then you can move on to becoming a consultant, a subject matter expert, the head of the analytics team, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, Kaiser, if you have no access to SAS, the point is SAS provides a free 
training version which is called as the SAS University edition you will need to download that if you want to join the SAS course also so that is free and that can be installed uh, by anyone thank you Maduresh uh, Roshan the Java primer will actually be eight hours of videos which will be given to you to learn the basics of core Java you will go through those videos before the course starts it's a part of the Hadoop course itself and we are not charging anything extra for that so Maruti yes you can call me on my number and I'll be happy to help you out right any further questions anyone have I missed out on any question I'll be here for another minute or so. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Sure, Anand, you can do that. Right, Maruti, you can call me after an hour or so. Thanks, Kaiser. Look forward to your joining the course. All right, guys. So if there are no further questions, uh, thank you so much for attending today. And I hope to see you all as part of our course uh, batches starting on 5th September and 21st September, whichever suits you. All right. Thank you so much.